ఉంటే అని సే పెయిన్ హెస్ గాట్ అ పర్పస్ యువర్ మోర్నింగ్ హెస్ గాట్ అ పర్పస్ your crying has got a purpose your weeping has got a purpose your period of lamentation has got a purpose there's a purpose and a season for everything and when i read the bible when i look at the life of jesus he had a purpose he said i'll turn your mourning into dancing you're weeping into joy i have a purpose you are going to weep for a season but don't worry i have overcome and i'm going to give you joy hallelujah that's one thing i found when i got into serious problem this problem is not for my uh, god doesn't plan that problem for my destruction he plans that problem for my construction amen okay so i want you to be men and women of action is that okay we ended the last service with the song we're going to start the service again with the song right so stand up together look at somebody and say god is going to turn your mourning into dancing your weeping into joy turn to somebody and shake their hands and prophesy into their life and say god is going to turn your grief into something wonderful something joyful yes Woo. come on clap your hands
Shout Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Psalms 3011 says, You have turned me, my mourning, into dancing. Jeremiah 31 13 says, Then the virgin will rejoice in the dance. And the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning into dancing. God says, I will turn. Today I want to tell you, God is going to turn some of your mourning into dancing. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. hallelujah. In John chapter 16, verse 20, truly, truly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will re rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. God is in the business of turning your weeping and your sorrow and your pain into an occasion for celebration. That's why he says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. I'm so happy to welcome each one of you to the ocean of love. Thank you. This is our desire. This is our heart's desire. This is my vision that we love people and shower them with love. So much love that they cannot stand it. That's what God does. God showers us with love. Whether you're good, bad, ugly, matter. God just loves you amazingly. So welcome to the ocean of love. And this is a missionary church. Welcome our dear brother who's with us, Daniel Shetty, please come. Clap your hands and welcome Daniel Shetty. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm just, you know, feeling back home and uh, I'm not new to any one of y'all. I'm so glad and excited. It feels like coming back home after a short vacation. Uh, really excited to be here and... Uh, uh, this, this afternoon, I want to share something which God has put in my heart for this time. And I'm excited to share uh, in the midst. Uh, I know that we're not here just by chance or just because I'm traveling. I want to just catch up and go. But I'm here uh, with a purpose to sow that one seed which actually can change or transform uh, this season for each one of y'all. I've been desperately praying that, Lord, that, you know, it shouldn't be a waste of time for any, anyone coming here. Even a second shouldn't go in vain. We should spend time in the presence of God, go back with packed revelation of Word of God. And, you know, you know, the Word of God says that whoever comes into the presence of God will be satisfied and filled with His presence. Uh, yeah. Can we all stand up and just look up to God for a few seconds, you know, and just give glory to God? Uh, it is not the man, it is not the message, it is the Lord. It is the presence of the Lord can, you know, which will make the difference as such. And this time, uh, we are towards the end of 2023. And in a few, few months, we'll be entering into 2024. And I'm seeking God that in this last few months, something should be unpacked in our lives. Something that you have been waiting for should be unveiled in this last few months. Rakha Sutra Boloke. Let's see, God. I sense the presence of God. Lord, uh, this is not my time. This is not our time. This is your time to intervene into our lives. Presence of God, move over. Holy Spirit, take over, uh, God. We lay our crowns. We lay our names, our positions, our stature outside this room, Lord. We lay our crowns down. And we humble ourselves at your feet. I want to hear from you, Lord. We want to know what's your will, your plan, your purpose in our lives. We want to change our morning into dancing this afternoon. We want to go back, our hearts filled with joy that you have spoken to us. Visit us this afternoon. Speak unto God for a few seconds. Make this time a special visitation time. It's a time of visitation. It's a time that the Lord wants to speak to you. 
for which you have come here. You have not come here for a Sunday service, but you have come here to listen to the Lord God of heaven and earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take your seats, please. We know about uh, a great man of God, you know, Isaac. You know, there's, there's so much that we know about Isaac. I thought I'll, I'll just speak a few things about Isaac this, uh, this, uh, this afternoon. The greatest blessing of Isaac was that he was a promised child. He was an awaited child, you know. They waited for him for many years, their parents, and then Isaac was born. A few highlights about Isaac is that he was a promised child. And at a very young age, he was surprised by his father when he took him to the mountain and said, hey, you are the sacrifice. But then Isaac obeyed and laid down, right? So that was a second uh, milestone or say something which was mentioned about Isaac. And the third time you hear something dominantly about Isaac is that, you know, his mother passed away with whom he was much attached. And then he got married to his wife, uh, you know, Rebecca in a very miraculous way. And then we also heard a lot of messages about Isaac that he was a man who had the favor to sow and to reap hundredfolds, right? So we also heard about him. We have heard so many positives about Isaac, you know. His life was full of blessings. He was born with a silver spoon because his father was a rich man, Abraham, filled with all kinds of blessings. He had no lack in his life. So while I was just meditating on the life of Isaac that, hey, why do we always see positivity in Isaac's life? Has something happened in his life which was not good? Can we learn something out of that part? So then I stopped in a place where Isaac went through tough times in his life. And there I was really, you know, meditating upon the word. That's what I will speak about this afternoon. Uh, so just to summarize one line. On the background of Isaac was that if you look at Genesis, you know, chapter uh, uh, 25, Genesis chapter 25, and words number 5 and 6 talks about the real blessings of Isaac. It says, you know, that, and Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. When Abraham was about to pass away, he called in and he gave all that he had to Isaac. Why? But when Abraham gave gifts to the sons of of the concubines which Abraham had, and while he was still living, he sent him away, away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. This one line actually stopped me saying, Abraham, when he was dying, he called Isaac and he gave everything which he had to Isaac, but for the other sons and children, he gave them gifts. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like partiality that, you know, Abraham gave everything to Isaac, but only gifts. Gifts can be some chocolate, some some kind of a toy, <laughs> anything it can be, gifts. But then you look about Isaac's life, he was filled with blessings, right? He had everything which Abraham possessed. He was a man of blessings. He was a man who was filled with blessings. And as we look at his life, we'll turn to Genesis chapter 26. Isaac comes into a stage where, you know, he's continuously being blessed, but then he passes through Genesis 26. It says in verse number 1, And there was a famine in the land, uh, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of Philistines, unto Gerar. So now is the time that Isaac, though he is blessed in every area of his life in one side, he comes to the point of, of famine. And he then decides to move to another place, Egypt. Like as his father also did, exactly following his footsteps of his father. But then in words number second and third, God appears to him and says unto him, Don't go to Egypt, dwell in this land, and I will bless you. And I will tell you what I will do. Verse number three, he says, Be here, and I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries, I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. So God speaks to Isaac to stay back and he commits to him that I will bless you, stay back here and whatever I promised your father, I will unlock it here. He stayed back obeying the word of God and that's, that's where you see that uh, the word of God says that Isaac sowed in the times of famine and he still reaped a hundred folds. So while Isaac was actually being blessed so much that even in the times of famine, he was been blessed. 
He was a man of blessings. I could say that I wouldn't have seen anybody of this kind of a favor that even when the whole world is going through recession and he sows the seeds and he reaps multifolded. So what happens next is very interesting, and that's what the main message of mine is. It's not the background here. So as he lives there, the words the 13 and uh, 14 says, uh, you know, that Isaac became really rich, really abundant. He says, you know, that verses 13 and 14, the man Isaac grew great and went forward. He grew until he became really great. The Bible talks about Isaac saying he became really great. I mean, in these days, we call Fortune 500 or Fortune, you know, Forbes, richest people. Maybe he could have been on the top of this list in those days. He was a real rich person. 14th words, he had possessions, he had flocks, he had herds, he had servants, to the extent that the others were so jealous about him. So that's the level of blessing that Isaac was possessing. But then what happened now is that, while on one side, Isaac was expanding, he wanted to now settle in a place. It seems like Isaac was thinking that, now I'm being blessed, I got everything in my life, now I need to settle down. So then what he does is that, he and his servants, they start digging wells now. Because wells are the source of settling because you, you need to be in a place where there's water for your family, for your children, for your animals, everything. So he was looking for a place that I need to settle my entire wealth and belongings. So that's a sign where he says that they were digging um, wells as such. Now, verse number 19, and Isaac's servants digged in the well, in the valley, and found there, you know, uh, there a springing water. And the herdmen of Gerah did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, which means, uh, you know, a straw with me. The first well that Isaac dug, they found really great water. A spring of water was flowing by. So Isaac thought, yes, we've, we found water. Now we will settle here. But the men of that place, Philistines, they come and they take the water saying, this is my water. It's same as, you know, People who are into business would, would understand what I'm telling. You have invested in a venture. You have put your money there. And you started to see business growing. Waters are flowing. And then suddenly somebody comes and says, hey, th this is mine. You have to leave it away. So that was the stage of Isaac. You know, he wanted to settle well. He, he was doing a good job. His hands were blessed. Whatever he was doing was prosperous. But then the first stop came in where it was been grabbed by the enemy. So you see the first challenge that Isaac faced in his life was this. He never faced a challenge, I believe. It was never recorded that he went through downturn in life. This was the first time. So Isaac, the first time, you know, somebody comes and grabs away what he did as a hard work. And he calls the name of that first well as, uh, you know, Isaac. And Isaac means uh, dispute or contention or say, you know, there's a lot of dispute there. He didn't stop there. He left that well and he moves forward. And they dig another well for the second time. And he calls the name as a Sitna. The next words are such. Again there, when they dug the well, they found water. And the Philistines again come and say, hey, this is our water. This is my land. You leave it away. So Isaac again for the second time got lost. He invested again. He ventured into a business again. And somebody came and captured it. So two ventures of Isaac's were failed. Two ventures of Isaac got failed. So he was thinking maybe in the time saying, hey, I'm a blessed man. Everything my, my father possessed is in me. But w what is happening with me? I'm, I'm losing too big stuff in my life uh, consistently. But Isaac didn't stop there. And I could relate to Isaac. You know, and we could relate to Isaac consistently if you lose things. You have been facing failures one after the other. Maybe you have faced a few interviews, some of young people, and you failed in two or three interviews. You lose your confidence. You start, you know, questioning yourself, right? And you start seeing some failures in life. A lot of disturbance, as Isaac saw, the first one is called as, you know, essay, which means like disputes, a lot of disturbances. He named it very really. 
Second is Sitna, which means to say hatred. They were hating him. Maybe we, we also passed through these kind of circumstances where you failed and you got, you know, disappointed. Again, you tried, you failed again. And then you, you start feeling that, you know, hey, there's, there's hatred in our hearts. Or say you start hating yourself or hating people who are doing that against. And you come to a place of saying, giving up time, right? So Isaac passed in that phase of Isaac and Sitna kind of an experience. You know, but the Bible says in the next words, as we go forward, 22 words, and he removed, you know, and, and he removed from tents and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it as Rehoboth. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in this land. So the third time when he came, you know, when they dig the well and they found the water. And then, you know, the, the enemies who took away the last two ventures of his, the last two victories of his, you know, didn't come now. So it just, I just feel that Isaac would have felt that after so much of a strife, so much of a struggle in the midst of failures, in the, in the midst of no way to go, he would have just felt a sigh of relief. And, and beautifully, he says, you know, that for now, the Lord is with me for now you know i'm going to see victory and i call this place as rehoboth rehoboth is so prophetic for isaac and it is and it is so strategic for isaac is that from that time the course of his life actually took him to a new dimension so i want to talk something about rehoboth this afternoon and may the lord bless these words to enrich us and to, you know, uh, and to satisfy the needs uh, in our life. Rehoboth means broad places. In simple terms, in the Bible it says broad places. While he moved uh, in the past through, you know, narrow places. He was moving from Essek to Sitna, which are points of failure, points of discouragement, disputes, and hatred. He was struggling to move forward. And to see victory, God brought him to the place of Rehoboth. And I'm sure if I was there, I would have seen Isaac walking into the Rehoboth season. And he would have said, Oof, what a time it is. Finally, God has brought me here to Rehoboth. That kind of a feeling. Or say, oof. Or say, in our Indian language, you say, Abba, at least now, you know, God has given me the breakthrough. So Isaac came to a place called as Rehoboth, where he saw you know, that God has brought, me, brought him into a broader place, broader areas. We might have failed in our lives in the past. We, we might have seen a lot of disappointments in any areas of our life, be it, you know, our careers, be it our personal lives. You know, we might have failed in our past relationships. We might have failed in businesses as well. Some of us would have ventured into businesses, failures after failures. I'm, I'm come here to tell you one line, if you're here for, to hear from God, that one sentence is that you are entering into a Rehoboth season, which is a season of broadness. God is going to explore things into your life. I'm so glad to see that pastor talking about this brother, you know, that they're entering into some kind of a venture, whatever is that connected to God. This is a season of Rehoboth, broader places. God is going to broaden your horizon. God is going to broaden your thinking. God is going to broaden things as such. And then you, you can ask me, saying, brother, what does this Rehoboth means? Broad places is fine, but what does that really mean? What does that really mean? So I have five S, you know, to remember this very simply as such. So Rehoboth has got a spiritual meaning for Isaac. When Isaac entered into Rehoboth, he would have felt, you know, that, hey, Oof, this is after such a long struggle, one year, two years of going with tight conditions, stiff problems, God has brought me out into this you know, broader place. The first S is about separation. Isaac got separated when he entered into Rehoboth. So, separated from what? So, separated from his past failures, right? Essek and Sitna were his past failures. So when he entered into Rehoboth, he got separated from his past failures, from his past guilt. Pastor speaks very well about, uh, you know, guilt, you know, that we should not carry guilt. I heard a message uh, from Pastor about guilt. 
When you want to move into a new season, you should not carry your past things, be it guilt, you know, be it failures. If you have failed in the past, it's okay. We all fail. But then move forward into the Rehoboth season where you get separated from all kinds of distractions. Isaac had so many distractions. The Philistines were grabbing things away. Whatever he was trying to do, he was seeing failures. But then as he entered into Rehoboth, uh, you know, he got separated from his past uh, things in life. When God called Abraham, he said, Abraham, leave everything and move out from your place into the place which I have called you for. But our father of faith, what he did, he brought his nephew Loth with him. And as they moved forward after a few years, that Loth became a problem for, for Abraham. And as you read that story of Abraham, you know that when Abraham left Loth away, then the Lord started to bless Abraham. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, when you move into this season of Rehoboth, where God wants to take you into a broader place, He wants to bring you into freedom, He wants to bring you into enlargement, He wants to enlarge the territories you have been into, you know, you get separated from your past life. You get sub separated from your past failures. You get separated from your past guilt, your past habits as well. You enter into a new season where you are separated for God and His work. Yes, that's the number one S. Yes. Number two is that when, when Isaac entered into Rehoboth, he would have felt a sense of satisfaction. Number S, yes, two, satisfaction. He was not satisfied, though on one end he was so much blessed. He had the cattle, he had the herds. He had servants, he had money, he carried his father's favor over his life. But as he was passing through Esek and Sitna, there was no sense of satisfaction. As some of us can relate, that brother, I have everything in life, but something I'm missing. I don't have that peace, I don't have the rest in me. You know, the biggest gift that, I, that Adam and Eve received from God was rest. <laughs> the seventh day, God said, take rest, Adam. <laughs> but what we did is that over the years, we messed it up. And we lost that rest somewhere. And now we work to get that peace and that rest again. God knew us from the beginning. <laughs> right? Satisfaction. What Isaac got when he entered into Rehoboth season was a sense of satisfaction in what he was doing. You know, most of us might be in that place. You know, that I'm making money. I have everything in life. But somewhere I do not have that satisfaction. Yeah, Some, something is missing. I just feel empty sometime, somewhere. So Rehoboth season gives you a sense of satisfaction in every areas of our life. Jacob worked for 14 years with his uncle. His uncle's business flourished and prospered, but he didn't. Until one day, God spoke to him in, in Genesis chapter 31. You don't have to show, but I'll fast track. In Genesis chapter 31, God speaks to Jacob saying, Jacob, I know you've been here struggling. You know, in tight places, tight conditions. Now, take all that belongs to you and move out into a broader place. Uh, and I will bless you there. And as Jacob came out of that place, God started to bless him. He also had a Rehoboth in his life, which means a broader spaces as such. Satisfaction. You know, God wants to give satisfaction to us in these days as we walk into the season of Rehoboth. Uh, you know, God wants to give satisfaction in every area that you do. In your work which you're doing, you will be satisfied. In your family life, in your spiritual life, in every areas of your life, God wants to satisfy you in your life. The number three, S stands for stability, right? You, you see that Isaac's life uh, was moving step by step but was, was not stable, right? There wasn't stability where he can pitch his tent uh, and say, this is my place I want to dwell in. He wasn't able because the enemy was not allowing him to settle. It was grabbing. As soon as they dug wells, they were trying to grab things around. So, so there was no stability. And again, I can connect uh, to all of us, some of us. You know, for many years, uh, we have been into the phase of no stability. Stability, you know, we have so much of wavering of minds, a wavering in relationship. There is no stability. We don't find stability. In careers, often we lose job, find job, right? Stability. You know, I want to encourage you all that, you know, in this season of uh, Rehoboth, uh, you will find uh, stability in every areas of your life. Even King David, you know, when he was, you know, in the midst of so much of turmoil, 
he went through different phases of struggle right most of his life he was chased by Saul he was living in caves the caves of of uh, uh, you know there's a wonderful name of his cave it's called as cave of uh, cave of uh, i think i forgot about it cave of adulam cave of adulam there's a message i've r- written about the cave of adulam there god actually did so much in his life in that cave he brought him to that cave for a long time god made him to stay in that cave of adulam there's a name mentioned and it's got a lot of importance in the life of uh, uh, david so david also moved through a lot of instability and it mentions in psalms 1836 it says you know that lord thou hast enlarged steps under my feet that my feet did not uh, slip you know 1836 you enlarged my path under me that my feet did not slip meaning of rehoboth is enlargement as well so david also needed a rehoboth season where god has to enlarge you know the feet under him where he was not able to slip he stood firm in everything he did stability right so many of us pass through these kind of uh, things in our lives it could be in a career it could be in any areas of a life that you're passing instability there is no stability right you you win and you lose you win and you lose there is no consistency and i want to tell you that to encourage you that in this season of rehoboth god stabilized isaac god will stabilize you as well in john chap- chapter 4 there was a very un- unstable sinful person she came to the well samaritan woman we know this story very well she came to the well for the water right and she met jesus there jesus went and met her and he started the dialogue with her and as they were talking some interesting topics about worship uh, jesus tells her you know go and get your husband and she very smartly tries to pretend saying no i'm not married i don't have a husband so jesus says come on you you had five you're living with the sixth now right and she then got shocked god revealed her that you you had an unstable relationship in the past right some of us might go or are going through his unstability in our relationships as well you know and then she meets jesus and then there's a lot of engagement happening between jesus you know and her and this unstable person throws her pot gets into the town and start preaching about jesus and and she wonderfully tells you when you go back read john, john chapter 4 she she uses a very nice word she says hey look come i've seen a man the people who, who would have heard her would have got confused saying are you talking about man you have seen six of them and you're talking about another man now what's wrong with you but then she didn't stop she preached the gospel the whole town came to the lord stability when you meet jesus when you get into that season of rehoboth your unstable life would start getting into stability you will stabilize you be it any areas of a life be it your relationship be it your career which has been taken at all you are not able to grow up right be it in your any areas your spiritual lives you know some of us you know i was talking uh, in one of the church in saudi saying hey where is that person who was sitting here three months back and the pastor tells me brother he is in and out person what does that mean he is wavering sometimes spiritually good not good oh he is unstable person <laughs> so some of us also have this instability in your spiritual life in and out right so when you move into the season of rehoboth god stabilizes every areas of your life uh, i want to encourage you for that the number 4 uh, s is about uh, settling down when isaac stepped into rehoboth uh, he would have thought fine wow this is a great place god has brought me to a season of rehoboth this is a place to settle and as you read that genesis chapter 26 forward the bible says that he pitched his tent there right he wanted to pitch his tent in esek and sitna the first two times but he didn't do that and as he moved forward he started to pitch his tent it means to say that isaac started to settle down in a place in the season of rehoboth i want to tell to someone you know you're looking uh, for settling your life you know god wants to settle you in this season i mean it could be you're looking for a husband you're looking for a wife a life partner god want to settle you in this season of rehoboth you might have failed in your last two ventures last two relationships 
But this time, God is going to settle you sweetly because you're entering into a Rehoboth season, settling down, settling. You know, this happened with a wonderful young widow called as Ruth in the Bible, right? She got married at a very young age. You know, she lost her husband. But then she clinged on to a wonderful mother-in-law, Naomi, who was like a strategist for Ruth, right? And she gave her all the strategies how to get the right husband. She went into the place back, right? They both decided that they're going to turn back to their home country, right? And they went into their place. And there, God actually helped Ruth to connect to her boyas, settling down. When you enter into your Rehoboth season, you will settle. Some of us would be in a stage like, I've been living here for a long time. I, I, I never felt that I'm settling. I'm still settling. I've not settled, right? Settling. God wants to settle you in this season. And as you enter into your Rehoboth season, He wants to settle you in every areas of our life. That unstability, He wants to remove it. He wants to settle you in this season as He settled Isaac. That's an importance of Rehoboth as a season as such. The last five S is successful. You know. First, we spoke about separation. Second, we spoke about satisfaction. Third is about stability. Fourth is about settling. And fifth is about successful. Now read that verse which, be, uh, which uh, Isaac beautifully uh, tells in uh, verse number 22. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for they that they strove not there. His, his enemies didn't come back there. And he called the name of it as Rehoboth. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in this land. That word fruitful has got a lot of importance for Isaac. He didn't say fruitful in different places, but he used that word fruitful when he came to Rehoboth. When you come to that season of Rehoboth, God starts making you fruitful, successful, right? Fruitful in every areas of your life. Isaac stepped in from a series of failures, from a series of disappointment. And then he comes into Rehoboth and the Lord says, now, you know, you will be fruitful in this place. I was so fascinated when I got this word. And I was thinking, you know, that is, is, is this the right word for, for this season, Lord? Is it the right word or am I just sharing it? Do I need to share a different word? Then yesterday night, uh, again, as I was trying to read it, I, I got to this one line which says, you know, last uh, second line, it says, for now the Lord has made room for us. It says now time, right? It's now. This is the word for now, not for the next season. This is the word for you for now. This is the season now that God is taking you into the Rehoboth uh, season. Isaac says, for now the Lord has, you know, given us room. He will take us into a broader place. He is enlarging the space under your feet. He is enlarging your territory. Rehoboth means enlargement. Uh, uh, Rehoboth also means freedom, you know, freedom from the past. The last word, successful and fruitfulness, we can connect to Joseph, our great example of how, you know, he was thrown in a prison within the four, you know, walls for many years. And one day, the king calls him out and says, hey, there is a call for you from the king. And he steps from a small place to a much more wider place, which is the palace, right? From the prison into the palace. That was his Rehoboth movement when he moved from a small place, congested place, from a life which was full of, you know, stress into a life which is much more broader, which is the Rehoboth season. God wants to make us fruitful in what we do in this season, the work of our hands. He wants to bless the work of our hands. He wants to make us fruitful in this season. But then, you know, you can ask me saying, brother, this is all good to hear. We will believe it, accept it. But how do we make it happen? How do we get this going forward? The main purpose, or say the main uh, motto of Isaac was to, you know, how God used Isaac was that, to bring the promises of Abraham into life through Isaac, right? But what did Isaac do to get these things going was that, you know, in the beginning of this chapter, he says, when God asked him to stay back, I'm going to bless you in this place. If I was there, I would have raised the question, God, there's famine everywhere. 
and there is life in Egypt, why are you stopping me to go there? Why should I be in this place? Strategically, it is right to go there, not here. But then Isaac trusted God. Isaac believed God. The secret to enter into Rehoboth season was two things. One is believing God, being obedient to God. Second is that he didn't give up after the two, you know, failures, Isaac and Sethne. He moved forward. He trusted God and he moved forward. Can I call upon the worship team? So, so I want to encourage you all uh, this, this afternoon that the season that we are entering is a, is, is a season of broader places. Is a season of uh, Rehoboth, where God wants to unlock that potential in you. There were a series of failures which Isaac went through. A series of disappointments. And I'm sure if I was in Isaac's place, I would have you know, questioned myself saying, hey, I'm a person of blessings. You know, I'm a child of promise. You know, I, I've never seen failures in my life. But why am I started to see these things in life? You know, but then Isaac didn't stop there. He moved from Isaac to Sitna. And from Sitna to Rehoboth. And Rehoboth is the season. I came here to tell you this one thing, that if you're here to hear God, then you are into the season of Rehoboth, which means to say, you know, that God is taking you out of that, you know, tight conditions, tight situations, out of the continuous failures, out of those constant, uh, you know, kind of a struggle you went through for the last few years. God wants to take you to the next step. And that is Rehoboth. Can we all stand?